Hey, so Bruns, before we get started, I told BC I'm gonna need you, hit, you, Shafe, and and BC to switch up your seats because you're part of the reason that Nebraska has struggled uh, at home. So you guys just change seats, okay? <laughs> yes, it's that that among uh, over everything is the reason they've struggled. <laughs> it is. We, we could do that. Break break up, break up that game. threesome. I don't know how you like- sit, to be honest. I'll bring a standing desk. I'll I'll move move Mike Babcock out of the way, and and I'll uh, I'll just put put a standing desk right there. Nobody for, moves. For nobody moves we'll the goat. It. No, no, no. But yeah, well, we'll see what we can do. Because um, I guess, well, yeah, that's it's been we. <laughs> Now that you mention it, we've been in that configuration since the 2017 season, yeah. so you might be onto something there. Yeah, just give it a try. So it's, it's not like one of you can get mad at the other. You're only taking each other's seats. So it's your guys' fault. Is, is that it, that's, that's where we're? Yeah, I tried to convince. That, that appears yes. to be the case. Yeah. All right. Well, I think you know what you have to do, as a yeah. uh, gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> I think you know what you have to do here. Take one for the team. Um, <laughs> Brunts, as you as you look. Uh, let's look back first, actually, as you look back to the USC game, it, it seems like, and maybe I'm living in my own little bubble here. That's entirely possible. Typically is the case. Yeah. Usually it seems like coming off of a loss, the, the narrative around Nebraska has been more positive than I would have expected. A, is that what you've seen or experienced B if it is, why do you think that is? Yeah. I mean, I think. I think you probably – the people that have, that I know who have weighed in on it, I think generally have weighed in on that game and the direction going forward based on kind of how they felt going into it. Because, I mean, I, I think I, I would be willing to entertain the, you know, the, the viewpoint that there was more tempo on offense and there were some plays there that probably needed to go for more than they did. Um and, and that's all good considering what you had 12 days to, to kind of make everything mesh and work together. And, you know, I, I think I could also go along with the viewpoint of, you know, the, the numbers and production and everything else was pretty similar to what it had been pre, you know, prior to, uh, prior to the USC game. And you saw some of the same issues that, that have popped up over the last five, six games. So, I don't know. I mean, I, I think. I mean, I, I'm I'm eager to see what another week of this looks like. I'm eager to see what, um, you know what what it looks like offensively, with, you know, a, another week to kind of learn personnel. I mean, you know, I, I don't. I know that Dana Holgerson doesn't know names over there yet. Um, I, I have to think that, you know, another week of practice, maybe you're able to to see some different guys that might help in different situations. So I, 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 I'm eager to see what that looks like this weekend. And, you know, I I think, uh, you know, the, the one thing though, that kind of stuck with me from that USC game was just kind of watching guys file out of the locker room after the game. And it was, uh, it it was a group that seemed like was going to need to be picked up this week. Like I, I, it didn't, it, it, it kind of struck me as a, a group that was a little bit beaten down by the way things have gone. So we'll, we'll see what which Nebraska shows up. But, I mean, I, I feel like we talked about that last week going into the USC game where it was a little bit of like, okay, you, 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 you've you had all these losses pile up. How are, how are you going to show up and how are you going to play? Yeah, so this is the first time. So this is diff, this is just my opinion. So I'm going to get your thoughts here, Brunts, which is why I yep. think we have weekly guests, isn't it? All right, I'm just going to follow the script. <laughs> uh, sometimes I just have to process out loud, Bruncey. <laughs> um, <laughs> you should. Robbie's laughing because he knows I'm I'm certifiable. But you should travel with me, Brunts. One of these times when I don't want to fly, and I'll ride with you, and you're going to be like, "Oh my God, this guy's as crazy as I thought." <laughs> um, no, but seriously, Brunts, I think this is the first time. Because I'm going by what you said after those guys were leaving, right? I think this is the first time the defense is thinking, man, we 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 dropped the ball back here, especially you know some spots in the secondary and a couple hustle plays. And are are we gonna? Do I still want to be in control of my own outcome? Because sometimes, as a player, you're like, shoot, that was on me, man. I'll make it up to you. 
other other people are like, man, they just were better than me, man. I laid it on the line. So depending on where you are on that side of the coin, you have to face that because a lot of your your toes are gone because it was self-inflicted. On offense, I think they feel better because it actually was probably better than they thought, especially mechanically or operationally. So they know yeah. they're probably going to get better, right? Do you, do you, do you, do you think that's the – Have do you remember a time where the offense is like, oh, man, we got a lot more left, and defense is like, I don't know, man. Did we shoot our shot? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, that, no, that's fair. I mean, I, I know Matt – well, Matt Rule was asked, you know, specifically if, like, the, the Holgerson move was done to – like basically a benefit of it would be like a spark, like in kind of resetting the deck a little bit. And I think there's probably something to that. I mean, when, when you've just been not great for nine, great nine games and you have somebody coming in and speaking a little bit differently, you know, doing things a little bit differently. Um, I would imagine for guys that were maybe more role players rather than the, you know, 50 snap a, a game type guys, there's, there's probably a little bit of uh, a little bit of bounce in their step going into practice with, with somebody new looking at things. So I, I think I'll, I'll buy that on offense. Um, you know, I, I, I thought, I thought for the most part that things went pretty smoothly. Like I said, I mean, you, you saw Nebraska use a little bit, temp, a little bit of tempo. They were playing a little bit faster. Mm-hmm. Than, than what they had um, prior to to Dana Holgerson taking over, and I think for the most part that looked pretty good. Um, you know, there wasn't a lot of the procedural stuff that you would probably expect with a brand new offensive coordinator and, and everything else. So, that, I mean, that's good. I mean, I, you know, the the defense, this defense this year, it feels like a group that, you know, they they play with when they're playing really well, they play with an edge. And, and they play with some swagger and some confidence. And I, the last time we saw it was probably Ohio State. I mean, I, I didn't think that they played particularly confidently against UCLA. Um, I wouldn't say that even against the USC, that, that, you know, it was there for for 60 minutes. So, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I think defensively I'm, I'm just left thinking of Ty Robinson kind of saying that you know the the getting things over the top and over the hump and everything else and getting to that sixth win you I think they're feeling the weight of that a little bit right now and you know defensively you've got to find that edge and and, you know whether that's new guys whether that's you know dialing up the aggression I don't know but it just it just all season and especially in Big Ten play it seemed like a group that week to week not they're not in their feels, but like you can tell pretty early on, I think whether or not the defense is dialed in, and whether or not they kind of have that attitude that you need to to play the way that they that, that they want to play. We're talking with Michael Brunts, Brunts for twenty four seven. Brunts, how do you how do you kind of weigh out a couple things being true at once, or or things that I think are true? Maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong here. Where the offense needed a fresh set of eyes they needed a new perspective they needed someone else in the room and yet not everything that the coaches that were already there and doing was wrong like can you like how do you weigh that out in your mind especially like with wide receivers where you hear we need more guys like Bonner and Lloyd and then okay should Garrett McGuire have seen that maybe but you also have to way okay well Ja'Cory Barney's been really good too like is everything he's done bad or you know you, you kind of get what I'm asking there yeah no I mean I, I think I think it also comes down to you know how how the coordinator wants to run things I mean it, you know especially at the wide receiver position I mean Dana Holgerson is a wide receivers coach by background like I'm sure he has very clear expectations and you know just preferences on how he wants things run with that group um you know I, I i think i think you're right i mean i think two things can be true i mean i think somebody can come in and do things very differently from the way they were being done before but i don't think anybody would argue that you know getting jacory barney a lot of snaps has been a bad thing you know like i i think sometimes too you know if you can 
if, if things can be taught a little bit differently, like you, you're, you're kind of changing the stimulus for some of those guys. Of like, I'm sure they've been taught to, to block on the perimeter a particular way, um, you know, for, for the last year, going back to spring ball. But, you know, somebody comes in and, you know, I, I don't – I, I have not gotten the sense that Dana Holgerson is a, uh, will, will mince words. Um, so, you know, he comes in and says, you know, why, why, why aren't we doing this? Or why are we doing it this way? I think that's, that's fine. I mean, that, that's why you brought him in. I mean, that, that was the, the new set of eyes or, what, or fresh set of eyes or whatever, whatever the actual quote was. Um, so I, I, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, I think that's why you made the change was, you know, Matt Rule is kind of the CEO head coach. I know he's dialed in on certain certain areas, but I mean, I, I think that's why you bring somebody in like Dana Holgerson, who's been a head coach, who's been a, a successful offensive coordinator, is, is to say, look, we're going to do things a little bit differently and really kind of take control of how all that stuff's going on, both you know on the practice field and also you know in the meeting room and the way the game planning's done. You know what's interesting? This just hit me. I'm going back to when Coach Rule said, hey, you know, coaching is kind of lonely. Uh, he, You know, the fresh set of eyes, the whole deal. You know what I think we undersold? I think we undersold Coop's departure. Because mm. just listening to that response. Brunt's, the lonely comment? No, when Brunt mm. said. So Hulk, Dana is like Coach Rule's new heavy, but on the offensive side of the ball. Mm. Because Coop would say some things sometimes, Bronson. and I'm like, man, I don't know if they, you can say that. Like, <laughs> somebody's spirits just got removed. You know, their soul just got smoked, right? But I can't, he needs an alter ego. And at first, I thought it was going to be Donnie because – Donnie's very straightforward, and he'll say some things sometimes, and you're like, ouch. But it's usually only directed at the offensive line. It's not, right. it's not in its totality. I kind of think we undersell the yin and the yang portion of, of the CEO coach rule personality and kind of what Coach Holgerson brings to the table versus him losing Coop. I, I think it's – I don't know why that just hit me, but um, thank you for your beautiful answer, Bruns. Because you, are you vibing with that a little bit? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that's fair. I mean, I, I think, I don't know. I mean, I, I think with with Dana, I think there's also something to be said for like a, when a guy's been a head coach, he talks differently. Like, yeah, you know, Dana Holgerson at, at the at the press conference the other day. Like yes, he's a, he's straightforward. He doesn't, you know, he, he's not going to sugarcoat things. But I mean, he he's also been a head coach. Like he understands. I think I think you have a different understanding of the way that like coaching staffs work whenever you've been a head coach and you've been in that chair. And the thing with Cooper, kind of going back to what you're saying about Cooper. I mean, I think there's probably there's probably some truth to that. I mean, I. I mean, he had he had receivers ter- He had offensive receivers terrified. I mean, yeah. they would do one I mean, on ones, and he I, <laughs> that guy. Uh, yeah, I, I think there's something to that, Bruncey. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's uh, I don't know. In, in the, on that side of the ball, you, I kind of wonder too, like the way that everything happened, timing wise. I mean, he leaves. It was, it was like over the J- July Fourth holiday is when it kind of came out that he was leaving. Um, I, I've kind of wondered if things didn't kind of have time to settle in um, with him being gone and, and kind of who was going to be that, that type of voice on the defensive side of the ball. But I, I do, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I think it's probably tough. Uh, I mean, maybe, maybe he just doesn't care. Um, but, you know, if you're Dana Holgerson coming in, um, you know, you, on, on, in the middle of the season, everything's kind of set in motion already. Uh, I think it's probably kind of tough to come in and throw your weight around a little bit. I don't think he cares. Like, I think he's going to give you his opinion, whether, you know, he, you want it or not. And, and it's going to be straightforward, but I, I think there's probably, you know, his mix of personality and the fact that he's been a head coach, 
and the credentials that he brings, I mean, I, I think he can go in there and, and uh, you know, be, be pretty honest with the, with the assistant coaches of like, this is, this is what we're going to do. And especially if, you know, this is, this is going to go beyond these three games. I mean, wh- why wouldn't you? I mean, you're, you're kind of setting the table for how things are going to go in 2025 too and, and set the tone there. We're talking with Michael Brunts, Husker 24-7. Brunts, as we look at Wisconsin, um, obviously a program kind of dealing with some instability there your, themselves. Um, what do you What are you looking for from Nebraska this week? Is it just a continuation of what we saw offensively and – and what are you looking for defensively? Because I'll be honest, I left USC with more concerns about the defense than I did the offense. But they're the C- coming out of USC. You were more concerned about the defense. Yeah, I I was personally. Yeah. So so which side are you looking at, kind of more critically going into Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean it's my concern with with Nebraska defensively is you know do do you have everybody kind of pulling in the same direction? I mean our guys still up for this game I think are are guys willing to because I, I think Nebraska is sometimes guilty of this on defense where if if you get you get hit on a couple big plays there's a you're, you're kind of thinking of, it feels like it's being thought about later on and I mean Wisconsin does not have an offensive coordinator they're apparently going by committee so I don't know if that's you know, you draw straws if it's like a bingo tumbler. Um, if, if guys just take turns, I don't. I don't know what that means. Do you think it's like uh, a one, two, three, not it situation? Like with like the a, yeah, like a random random play. Like if somebody's just, sitting up there, like is AI calling this game? Like bingo guy, tumbler. Like like nose goes like you did in, in school. Like who has to put away the dishes? Bruns, like nose goes. Where, where does one purchase a bingo tumbler? You can get them on Amazon. <laughs> You could probably go to. They could probably find like, like a Hockenberg or where you're in town, right? What's that? No, you can get them off Amazon. We bought one in like February. Oh, okay. Are you, were, you, were you calling plays out of it? That, that would be great. I was not um, calling plays out of it. But, why would yeah. you need a bingo tumbler to play bingo? Oh my god! <laughs> what else would you need a bingo tumbler to call an offense? What are or like you, a sixty? Uh, what are you? Who's playing bingo? My my. Parents are older. Okay, old, old, old okay. people. Fine. <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I almost, I almost walked out just now. I had to catch over, my, over uh, bingo. I had to catch myself. Of all the out of pocket stuff I've said to you, you're gonna walk out over bingo. Well, I did, well at least you're. At least it was for your parents. <laughs> now you're just sitting around on a Thursday night during NFL, like, hey, hey Natasha, let's invite some of the crew over. Let's play some bingo. Bingo. Fudge. <laughs> so- so my my concern is is if if they're able to hit on a couple of those balls out of the bingo tumbler, like how do, how does Nebraska adjust to that? Like because because there's going to be things that Nebraska's not going to expect, or they're they're going to have to adapt. I mean, I I think that's probably my concern is how do you deal with things that don't look the way that you think they're going to, um, and and you know you have to be okay with Wisconsin probably fooling you on a couple things or giving you looks that you weren't ready for. And being able to roll with that, so I, I think it's it's the confidence thing, and it's also just being able to be malleable and, and you know kind of adapt to what whatever Wisconsin is going to pull out of its hat uh, for this game. I offensively, I, I think I think there's a chance Nebraska is going to be able to find something in the run game. I mean that's yeah. that's a place that Wisconsin has been gashed. Um, they're they're not a typical Wisconsin defense in, in that way. And I thought there were times against USC that Nebraska got into some good looks. It did, they, they were able to get some things done in the run game. So I, I, uh, I'm eager to see what that looks like a little bit more. Uh, I know your board went crazy. What? Who did they? Who would the consensus settle on that Coach Holgerson was talking about as a guy that they quote unquote found? Yeah, I think I think the offshore um, offshore odds are. Quinn Clark's on there, Makai Nelson. Um, I don't know. I, I guess part of my thought is, is like, okay, well, how unknown does this guy need to be? Um, you know, is it somebody completely off the, off the page? Is it, you know, finally putting Jalen Lloyd in the game a little bit more? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know, but it was, I think 
Clark and Nelson has been the uh, have been been the thought mm. Mm. leaders in the clubhouse. Yeah. Oh, sure. He's yeah, there's, there's, you know you could just go down to Warhorse, some... Bruncey. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they're taking action on that. <laughs> they do there, play there at home. Might be some, they're, they're in the clubhouse. There might be some guys left on the course, but I mean, I think that's where <laughs> what they're looking at. Hey, speaking of which, am I the only guy that is like interested in whether Bryson DeChambeau can? Make a hole in one, hitting a golf ball over his house. Are you watching that at all? It's on, on my TikTok every day. I'm captivated. <laughs> Brunt, is that weird? Do I need to grow up? So, what's he doing? I generally try to stay away from anything Bryce DeChambeau does. He's trying to hit a golf ball with an iron over his house for a hole in one. Okay. So he's got like a green in his backyard. He's on like day ten, and he's got a what's he? He's got a little driving mat in his front yard, so he's hitting the. It's like a hundred yard shot or something. Dude, his glass, okay. his house is all glass too. I'm like, man. It's yeah, you can't miss one. You can't. Uh, you better not shank. <laughs> he's, got that, he's got that live money. He's living dangerously. Yeah. Um, I wait for him to post it every day like some junkie. You got so mu- just one you got shot? Some, you have, no, he does. So he, do, he does 10, I think. So he does the number of shots for what day it is. So yeah. it's day 10, so we'll do okay. 10 shots. Day one, he did one shot, yeah. you know. Yeah. He hasn't made it yet. I, I bet he... I bet he could probably do it in like fewer than twenty days. So some, so somehow there's a guy that's talking to him. He'll say like short right or dead on three feet short because it's a blind shot for D. Shambo. Wow. Uh, Bruns, I'm but it's tell- all glass, right? You can't, you can't see through the house. <laughs> <laughs> no. I think there's an elevation change a little bit, so the hole oh, is God. below the house. <laughs> It's a good question, though. It is a good question, Brunson. Yeah. That's why we like you. Critical thinking. Yeah. Most unintentionally funny guy I've been around, Brunson. I think it's more intentional than you think it is. <laughs> Bingo uh, tumblers. Brunson, appreciate the time, as always. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks, Brunson. It's, it's been a pleasure. See you guys.